Welcome to the Railway Series Book Club, the podcast where we dissect the Railway Series. I'm Jamie. I'm Marina. I'm Vivian. And we hope you enjoy the show. Welcome everybody to the Railway Series Book Club, the podcast where we talk about the funny haha trains with faces. They have faces? It's the end of the season! Yeah, we've been doing this for nine months. Like, the... Yeah. I, I think almost to the day, because I'm pretty sure the first episode was uploaded November 10th. Or the nine months, uh, I the, think ba- so, the yeah. baby's finally ready. God. The baby known as oh. Toby. But Shadow, oh, no. it's Christmas! It's December 10th! Well, uh, Toby, Toby might be a while off yet. Before we go further into the Railway Series books, we're gonna take a little breather and just talk about what we've covered so far, you know. We're gonna be doing this every six books or so, just to kind of gather our thoughts and present what we think of this sort of era of the Railway Series. Also mainly just because I feel like in groups of six, the Railway Series mostly neatly fit into, like, four different eras, at least in the the original 26 books there's kind of like four eras making up the 26 books i feel so we're i mean we, we can ex- i guess now is the time to explain that but i feel like these six books that we've covered so far make up the pre-war era of sodor you know they're uh they're the six earliest books a lot of them are kind of rough and uh you know the early days the series is still getting its bearings the first six and books uh, the first six engines Wait, yeah you... and they're all and they're all set in like way the past like they're set like pretty far back in the past compared to when they were published with the exception of uh the fucking two stories in tank engine Thomas again they're supposed to be in the 40s but you know we already gave our thoughts on that being dumb and also Technically, since those take place in the 40s, they do take place before Toby, so generally all of these events are, like, you know, pre the end of the war, way before the, like, 50s era that we're about to hop into with Toby, so we are justified in making this, like, dividing line here. So this this arc (laughs) is the pre-war, and then you could say that the next arc will be our stories of war, um... Uh, actually, I, I, I honestly like to call it the post-war era because, like, well, I, it all takes I, place way I, after I, the I, war. I was... Audrey was actually a tasteful human being and didn't make stories about World War II with talking trays. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was making the funny <laughs> reference that I yeah, said I we wouldn't. Won, we won yeah, you were. It was it. so funny. Fuck. So, essentially, <laughs> with, with the Railway series, it, it was all fine and happy and chill on Sodor. And then war happened, and because war, or maybe because of this happening, war happened, is Toby. Toby showed up, and then there was war. Toby is built. World War I begins. <laughs> Wasn't that, I like, love the, like, that. The, the wiki for Gordon? It, no, it was the timeline on the wiki. It's like, Toby is built, World War I begins. <laughs> <laughs> It has the, it has the same energy as, um, the Kirby Dream Collection for the Wii has like a little timeline thing. Oh yeah, and it'll be like two thousand eight. Uh, Kirby Superstar Ultra released on the DS. Barack Obama is elected president of the United States. <laughs> Cause and effect. Kirby helped with. Isn't there also things. isn't there also one on the wiki that's like you know the spiteful break van is built. World War Two begins. Yeah, I think one of them was Gordon. I maybe. Th- this is extremely not the point of what we're doing. Uh, we're the bottom line is we're talking about the six books that we've spent the last nine months covering, and just you know share, sharing our just sharing our funny little thoughts on them, uh, one book at a time, I guess. So uh, yeah. let's start with three railway engines. Do we have to? It. I mean. That's how chronological order works. I feel like it's a good... It very much feels like a 
prototype for what the series would become, if that makes yeah. sense. Well, yeah, that, that's because it was. And I think it's, you know, it's a pretty good baseline. I think it's, uh, you know, I mean, we've been over this in our in our whole thing about it, is that it's a, it was a very good job, like, establishing the kind of, like, tone of the Railway series while also being, like, you know, it, it it's a good first step, I guess. I, uh, Mari, yeah. can I just say... I actually yeah. made notes for this episode for the first time ever for this fucking show. And I literally have in my notes exactly feels like a prototype for what the series would become. <laughs> nice. Wow. <laughs> you should add your notes to the notes document so that way no, like, we, can, mine. we can see what you have. They're all fuck you too. Um, <laughs> they're mine. I'm going to pull up the, the the statistics on this just so we can have fun. Oh, the, yeah. The total score, our, our kind of average score for the book is uh, 5.3, uh, which is 16 out of 30, which, which you know, I think it's a very, you know, it's, uh, you know, it is the baseline, but it's not like, you know, baseline, baseline. It's, you know, it's a good baseline. It's slightly above average. I... I, I mean, at least compared to, like, you know, some of the things, yeah. I guess. I don't know. I, I feel like, at least for me, it kind of doesn't help that, like, like, half of the book, because it's like, I, th I think Edward and Gordon is kind of the first, like, real story there, because it's like, Edward's Day Out is just, like, it's cute, but nothing really more. And then, like, I was about to call it Come Out, Henry. Uh, <laughs> sad, sad story is just, I still think it's shit. Like, I, I, I get know. what I, it's... I, I respect your opinion, but I feel like in retrospect, we were kind of, like, a little bit hard on it in our, in our coverage of it. Because, like, you know, I feel like it does very much suffer from the, like, you know early experimental phase or like not even that because like you know it was it very much feels like you know audrey it feels like the kind of story that would only make sense as like a standalone thing and then it just you know stayed in canon while the universe kind of moved on around it yeah so it's it's i, I guess it's early installment weirdness to an extent like, I think the best analogy I could make to it is, like, you know, if you give a mouse a cookie, like, that kind of book, where it's just kind of an yeah, escalating it's... chain of events, that's kind of how I feel like the story structure, like, evolved. And I don't remember if I said this in the episode, but it very much does kind of feel like Audrey told Christopher the rhyme, and then the resulting story was built from, like, Christopher just asking more questions to see how the story resolves, with it ultimately ending, like, you know... With the ultimate end point, like, okay, we can't go any further. He is now walled in the tunnel. It's the... <laughs> and then, you know, that's that's like a, you know, as like a non-serious kind of, uh, you know, children's book. Like, you know, if, if it was, like, all released on its own, like, if you give a mouse a cookie, you know, that might be fine. But because it's part of, like, a universe that kind of follows real-world logic and is realistic to an extent, it reflects badly... Yeah. Just because, you know, now you have to consider engine being bricked up in tunnel for extended period of time and just the, the ramifications of that and the everything else. It's, I don't know, it, it feels, I think out of place is the best word for it. It's, but you know, it feels like a story not meant for the, this franchise and that's because it wasn't. It's the kind of thing where I get why it exists the way it does, because, I mean, it was literally intended to be a standalone story, part of a book series that was originally supposed to be, like, standalone railway stories, essentially. Honestly, I imagine if, like, like, I'm sorry for interrupting, but I imagine if, like, you know, Wilbur had planned the books to be, like, a kind of anthology like this is all the characters like they're all on one railway it probably would have been called like edward's railway stories or something but like it's just called yeah. the railway series because it's like a series of books about railways yeah it's yeah i don't think the moniker even showed up until like 
the next book. It did, which makes sense. It's the book was you know. intended to be a standalone thing, and it wasn't intended to be a series of stories all in one continuity. So, like, Henry's story works in that regard, but, like, it very much doesn't fit the... Sorry, I got distracted. The cats are fighting. <laughs> oh. Um, Cane instinct. The... I don't know. It just feels out of place, and, like... Like, I, I guess as its own story, it's fine. It, I still kind of think it has, like, that Grimm's fairy tale vibe of, like... It don't be stupid, children, or horrible shit will happen to you. It's like, works for that, but doesn't really fit the series. It's weird. I yeah. It doesn't help that I feel like Henry is definitely the character that Audrey has, like, the least idea of what to do with. Because he kind of, he's kind of all over the place, and... <laughs> I this, literally like, have in sucks. my notes, I have no idea how I feel about Henry. He's barely an entity. Yeah, because it's like he goes from... I wouldn't... He goes from being an absolute dick in Sad Story to... Uh, I, which I think was part of why I don't like the story is just because it's very one note, I guess. Which, like, works as its own thing, but, like, when it's part of a larger continuity... And then it's like, like he goes from that, like, like to sick, to complaining, it's a fine, and just an engine. And it's like it, like all the others feel like they have something more defined at this point. I guess. Yeah. Henry is definitely yeah, the Hen least... Henry's an oddball. I feel like Henry or maybe Percy is probably the least developed of the original six at this point in the time, and Percy's just because he's barely got a chance to do anything. Yeah, Percy. Yeah. Percy said. I think it doesn't help that we're that Henry's characterization is kind of like yanked around between like you know asshole and sympathetic. Yeah. Like you know, I feel like there's a balance to be struck, but at this point, it doesn't really get that well established. I guess. In the first story, he's an asshole. In the next one, he's sympathetic. Then, you know, he's kind of sympathetic when he's sick the first time. Then he's an asshole the next two times, kind of, arguably. He's definitely an a- Oh, well, that's Benry, so I guess that's what he says. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of arguable whether or not he's an asshole when he, like, meets up with Thomas. Because, like, you know, in the TV version, they, you know, they have hindsight. So they can be like, oh, he's sick and act. Like, this isn't, like, you know, feigning illness, this is actual illness. But in the original story, it feels more like, you know, it, it might be him just being a dick. <laughs> and then in Henry and the Elephant, he's a dick, and in the other stories in that book, too. And then he swings back around into Sympathetic. It, he's, he's a little confused, I think. <laughs> but I think there is a balance that can be struck there, it just hasn't been reached yet. This is when we learn that Dick Henry is actually Benry. God. I mean, here's the thing. Uh, it literally you, being two, sep like fucking... two separate characters helps explain it more. <laughs> like, it makes it more God. consistent. Fucking Benry and Henry is like fucking uh, God and Piccolo and Dragon Ball. <laughs> yeah. Originally, there was one Namekian who then split into two beings, <laughs> God and Piccolo. Oh my god. So that's how we get Henry and Ben. Wait, oh do you my mean, god. Like, god is in like God? God of Earth. Yeah, there's yeah. literally a character yeah, named god Kami. Is a job and it's occupied by a green slug man. Next question. I, I hate anime. <laughs> <laughs> I hate anime. I'm going to destroy anime. I've told you weirder shit from Dragon Ball than that. Have you? I described the plots to all the Broly movies to you once. Honestly, the, the God and Piccolo stuff in Dragon Ball is kind of raw, though. The most recent thing you show me from Dragon Ball is the buff dragon. Oh yeah, Barunga! <laughs> I was explaining to V how um the normal dragon is Shenron, and then the bigger Dragon Balls on Namek give you a fucking dra bigger dragon that's just... 
redact this shit. Oh, fuck, I realized we forgot to introduce ourselves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, I... If you've watched this many episodes, you know who we are. Hi, I'm Jamie. I'm the host of the most pronouns she, her. Hi, what Marina, do you have you're... the mostest of? You never told us. Hostess? It's a hostess with the mostest. Yeah, but what What the mostest of what? Hostest? The, the, the mostest, like, I don't, I don't fucking know. You figure it out. Hi, I'm Marina, your local TV series bitch. I'm the one, pronoun she, her. I'm the one here to shit post and annoy everybody. <laughs> I'm V. I'm British. She, her. I... Also join the Discord. Also join okay, the now we're done with that. <laughs> we covered all of our bases! <laughs> we covered all our bases. Okay, now we can keep going. Um, So three railway engines, so, am I right? <laughs> yeah, three railway engines, you know. Yeah, I'm just... But like I said earlier, look at the scoreboard that you can see on your screens right now. You know. Can you send it? Uh, it's got a score... Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll send the, the graphics to y'all. Sorry, didn't I'm mean just, to cut you I'm off. I'm just, like, like, looking at my no, my notes right now, and literally all I have is a good start, but nothing noteworthy. He was, like, a prototype. Odd is nice. Edward. Yeah. The Middleton art is kind of, like, eh, I don't know about that, Chief, but the Dobby art is pretty okay. Oh, I fucking love Middleton's art. Middleton's art is, like... It's it's very weird. I mean, I guess the style is cute. It it just feels like such an outlier, just because it was. It's just so unlike all the other illustrations. That's yeah. why I um, like it. Or Middleton is the one where it's like the weird, like hand drawn original ones where the characters yeah. look nothing like the characters. Yeah, that's why I like it. Honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's weird and unique, but I can understand why Audrey wanted like real illustrations. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, like, I, we've talked a lot about Henry so far, so, like, can I just say how weird Edward is in the first batch of books? Like, he barely feels like Edward. Yeah, it hasn't really been established just really how old he is yet, so I, he kind of feels a bit more youthful. I actually kind of like that, to some degree. Yeah. Like, I... It's not like... Yeah, I think a, I like it, too. It's not a bad characterization, it's just kind of like, you can feel that he's not really been locked in place yet. Yeah, it's... I... I like that they... Oh. Sorry, got... Echo. <laughs> well, I wasn't gonna say anything. Uh... I lost my train of thought, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, I, I like that they kind of show more aspects of him than, like, the... Because I feel like out of all of the main cast, Edward is kind of the one that gets... Kind of ridiculous reduced the most a lot of, in the series a lot if that makes sense because it's like yeah he's the because like, it, it is easy one. to kind of overlook him in. yeah it's easy to kind of overlook him in favor of uh thomas and three through six especially like even the fucking uh like even in the like classic series it'd kind of overlook edward a little bit compared to the other. Yeah, I mean, he like, does. Keep, so. keep in mind, I don't think Edward had an original non Audrey written episode until season seven. He yeah. he had one in season six where he has a whole three lines. He has three lines, and it's basically just kind of a rehash of. God, well, I, I guess what it counts as a rehash if it's meant to be a callback to Gordon, Edward, and Gordon. I mean, it's basically just Super Rescue, but worse. I, I lo A little bit, yeah. I'm still so disappointed that we never got... Because they did... They did Edward and Gordon again, but with two engines. And then they did Edward the really useful engine again, but in CGI and a bit more. I'm so disappointed we never got, like, Edward and Gordon, but with three engines now. <laughs> it, it's like... I guess with Edward, it's like... Thomas is like, you know, he's like the, the plucky main character. He's a bit too big for his britches, you know. And like Henry's like kind of the grumpy one and Gordon's like the very full of himself one and James is like kind of like the very self-centered and like gets himself into shit all the time one. And Percy's like the baby and to Toby's like kind of the elderly gentleman. Edward's just the old one. Yeah, which is... I feel like Edward, Edward as elderly gentleman is also kind of... I... A valid interpretation. 
I feel like this might be best saved for when we get to Edward's book because it actually has an interaction between Edward and Toby. Oh, yeah, but I think, it does. I think the, yeah, I think the, the main thing that sets Edward apart from Toby is that he is, you know, he is an elderly gentleman, but he's a lot more practical, I think, whereas Toby is a bit more like, uh, he's a, Toby, I think, is a bit more wise, I guess, but not quite as, uh, intelligent i guess i don't know it, it's hard to word but i feel like there is like a their their stats are distributed differently when it comes to like their like age and experience i, I think i think the like the what toby doesn't know about branch line problems isn't worth knowing is like a good kind of summary of his character yeah. he's very knowledgeable on what he does and he does it damn well yeah <laughs> yeah i I guess I think they do a good job of, like, they establish Edward to some degree, at least to me, as, like, the older, like, m probably the most mature one out of the cast without, like, shining focus on, like, that he's the oldest. Because it's like they have, like, him, like, kind of realize what Thomas is, like, whining about and letting him, like, take his train and then they have him, like, help James like learn even though that story is garbage it's it's a good idea and then like they have him like teaching percy while like also showing him how to fuck around it's like i i don't know there's a lot more to him than i thought there was at this point like there's edward, like a lot of edward's a great character me hey. yeah i i'm Mari, i just want to say i'm sorry but when you said like teaches james i was just thinking about the fucking the bit from the fucking TNF abridged video from Moab, just we gotta stop James from being a jackass. You mean like the last five times? God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of Edward, tangentially, uh, his second story in this book is our highest rated story in this book. Ed, like, okay. I wanted to segue into this, I guess. Like, the statistics have been up on the screen for fucking ever. Like, the people can see. Like, you know, our highest rated story in the book uh, is uh, Edward and Gordon, and the lowest rated one is Sad Story of Henry. We've talked about Sad Story of Henry. Uh, but, you know, Edward and Gordon as highest rated, I, I think that's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, 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 our ratings I aren't really empirical that. by any means, but I feel like as part of our retrospective, we should, like, you know look at the ratings we gave things and kind of like you know yeah just, you know no i got what take, you mean take a look back on the things we said and what we think address things that we missed you know yeah but yeah i think it definitely has the most meat of the stories and it definitely like i think we talked about it a lot in the episode itself but like it it kind of is just like the baseline kind of for the series and it does it really well for our first yeah. one and it's, it, where so yeah. it's where so it's talk shit get hit aura came from yeah yeah it's 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 the primordial ooze the genesis the source of every content. hero also... has a mega drive exactly god it's also where the, the god edward <laughs> started which i think is one of our <laughs> yeah. favorite my favorite recurring bits for us and th and then there's Edward Gordon and Henry in this book, which I like. I still yeah. like them. It's it's a good second half to Sad Story of Henry. Yeah, I... I think you know it does a good it does a good job of tying everything together. Yeah, out in a set of stories that was not meant to go to go together, except for the Edward and Gordon one. I I but, think know. as much of an issue as we had with Sad Story of Henry. I think if you look at it and Edward Gordon and Henry as one long story, it gets a bit better. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's two parter. Yeah. It, you know, it's I, a, I, I, it's, I guess, I guess if you, if it you would benefit at, um, from if it were adapted today, like if you were adapting it today and didn't make any changes to like the, the actual story, I think the best thing you could do is have them join together as one story instead of having them be separate. Yeah. So I, I think actually, if you look at, but, like freeway engines as a whole as two duology stories so like edward's day out and edward and gordon are one long story and uh sad story of henry and edward gordon and henry are one long story i think that kind of gives them both a bit more depth 
Yeah. Yeah. It definitely, like, helps. And honestly, that's stuff I took into account in my ratings, especially for um, Edward Gordon and Henry. I honestly, I think part of the issue with Sad Story of Henry is that it's just, like, even with the tie up, it's just. Like, I think even adapting it again now would cause trouble because it's like, you have to iron down what Henry's personality is. And, like, even, like, the most consistent he's been in, like, later TV series doesn't really fit this. Yeah. So it... Honestly, I feel like if a modern adaptation would happen, I think it'd be relatively fine if they just started at Thomas the Tank Engine yeah, and maybe adapted Edward and Gordon like somewhere in the middle of those episodes I f- and just you know instead of having sad st- like you know maybe finding some other way to do the kind of general plot of sad story of Henry but tie it in more to the special cold plot line I- or something like I- I'm sure there are ways that you could do this but honestly I feel like you know just because of how iconic Thomas and the next book are, I feel like adapting this first would be a mistake. Yeah. So saving these story ideas for later and just redoing them in a way that works better to start at Thomas the Tank Engine would be be good, I guess. I don't know. Speaking of which, we should probably move on to the next book. I think we've expended yeah. a lot of our thoughts on well, we haven't talked about three Gordon. railway engines. Well, I mean, it's not like we'll we'll be in short supply of moments to talk about him. He's in, like, fucking all these except for uh, uh, the second branch line one. I, I guess, like, or my... The, I guess it's the first branch line one, technically, but it's the second Thomas one. I guess it's just, like, my Gordon in my notes is just, like, I have him listed as the only one in the first book they nail right out of the gate. Yeah. yeah. Audrey, Audrey nailed him right out of the gate. You like, know, not much to say. Gordon, just, you know, Gordon is... He is Gordon. Gordon is 100% Gordon from Free Railway Engines until, like, his final appearance. Yeah. Yeah. He's, from his first line, they get him pretty much. <laughs> it's... Which, like, I think that's kind of a testament to how fun of a character Gordon is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you can tell... Like, it's like we were saying in the last episode, we were talking about, you know, him being Audrey's favorite problem child. It's just, you know, he is very fun to write for. And I think it also helps that Gordon is such an impressive big engine, too. That adds to his appeal. Yeah. Like, Gordon's not my favorite engine, but I totally understand why he would be someone else's. Because he has a really fun personality, even if it is, like, you know... Like, it's a bad personality for someone to have in real life, but for a fictional character, it is so much fun to write for oh, and yeah. read stories about. <laughs> and, uh, he, you know, he also has a very impressive and cool visual design, because he's based off of a very cool locomotive. Yeah, My which... favorite character is the funny yellow train who steals a ball and causes an old lady's lungs to collapse. <laughs> oh! Uh, is Stuffy yellow? I thought he was brown. He's like a must. Oh like a, fuck! You're... He's like a mustardy yellow. Okay, for a second, I, you know, it's called Improve Engine Green. So I and I know it's not green, but I also never think of it as yellow. I always think of it as like a, a light brown or like just brown, I guess. So, but when you started talking about yellow train, I was like. When the fuck did Rebecca assault an old lady? <laughs> that was my first thought, too. <laughs> see, uh, see, I was assuming you were going to think Duncan, because I feel like Duncan would assault an old lady. He would complain about an old lady, but I feel like he would not assault one. Wait, Sir Handel probably would. Murray... Like, you know, Duncan's an asshole, but he's not like, you know... That's the main difference between, like, you know, Duncan and Sir Handel is that Sir Handel... Duncan isn't malicious. He's an asshole, but he doesn't, like, you know, go out of his way to hurt people. Sir Handel, mmm... Yeah. is our resident Duncan lover. <laughs> like, she has said on numerous Who occasions, love Duncan? Duncan is her favorite, and I yeah. totally fucking respect that. Per- Percy and Duncan tie for my favorite characters. We're making a move on to Thomas. Yeah. yeah. Thomas. I love the score difference between Thomas and Three Railway Engines. Like, it goes from, like, a 5.3 yeah, to a It goes from a 5 10. to a 10. 
And you know, I think going all the way up to 10 might be a bit like, you know, people might roll their eyes at it, you know, but like 10 out of 10 does not mean the absolute best on our score. It just, I mean, well, for, you know, none of our scores are like empirical data. Like, you know, yeah. these aren't meant to stand up mathematically. These, this is vibes only. Our opinions. To an extent. You know, it's it's based on our, that our sounds opinions. Like an and opinion. they don't, you know what? They don't have to be consistent. Uh, yeah, it's... We're just having fun. I think part of it, too, is because it's like, none of us... Like, none of the stories got a perfect 10 from any of us. But, like... I mean, like, we... Like, from all three of us combined. Thomas and the Breakdown Train comes closest, and... Yeah, it, it did come close. We almost... Uh, yeah. We almost got it. And I... I know I gave Thomas and Gordon a 10. Um... But, like, yeah, I, I think as a package, like, the, the there's a reason this is where the franchise started, essentially. Like, yeah, I, I, I literally have you know, in my it, notes, like... It has wonderful art. It has a wonderful arc. Uh, I, I have a wonderful wife. I have a powerful job. She criticizes me for being egocentric. Egocentric, meh. Like, I should have in my notes, this feels like the actual start to the series. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it... It does help that it's literally introducing us to a brand new character in the setting and establishing, like, you know, in establishing, like, the the new main character, it works very well as establishing an entire series. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why they led with it. I think it helps that, like, each story kind of goes through, a, like, kind of like a basic part of the railway. Because, like, it, like, the first story yeah. is, like, Thomas is the shunter, Gordon is the big express engine, Thomas gets dragged along with him, and then, like, the next one is Thomas wanting to take a passenger train, and then the next one is, like, a goods train, and then after that is, like, the, the more, like, extreme stuff that goes on. And, like, I, like, it opens up it, the world really well. It feels, yeah. it feels like it gives life to the the kind of cardboard cutout of a railway that the free railway engines introduced. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, you know, like, they say in free railway engines, you know, Gordon's the big express engine, but with, with the exception of, like, where he, the story where he literally breaks down, we never get to see that in the free railway engines. Yeah. And we don't even know what Henry and, like, Edward do. And here we finally see what they do. Yeah. And, and we know what Thomas does. Thomas is the perfect conduit to experience, like, you know, learning all these things through. Because he's having to... Well, I mean, I mean, I guess in universe he would know. But, you know, because we're experiencing him doing these jobs that these engines normally do, we get to see them for the first time as well. The world is opening up for us just like it is for Thomas in the story. <laughs> Basically, yeah. and... I, I, I should have, like, I have in my notes, like, Thomas's arc is probably the best one in the entire series. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like, I feel like this is a trend with, uh, you know, the books in this set that are good, which, uh, you know, is something that I brought up in, uh, I think, I think it was in Troublesome Engines that I brought it up, which is that most of the time books with a very clear vision of what they want to do tend to be stronger ones. So, like, you know, Three Reverie Engines didn't really have a main vision, but it was, you know, nominally fine. Yeah. Uh, the next book didn't have a vision, and it ended up sucking. <laughs> uh, but after that, all the books did kind of have a clear vision of what it was going, what they were going to be in each individual book. Yeah. So, that, you know, mileage may vary on whether they worked or not. Uh, we'll get to them, but, you know. Uh, I think... There was a pretty clear idea of Thomas's arc going into it. Yeah, uh, I am, something I am, we missed last time, though. I think it's so good um, that Audrey didn't buckle when, like, they were trying to get him to change the plot of the book. Yeah. Wait, what like, were they trying to do? Is I I think we bring this up in the episodes, but there was a producer woman who said the, the, the every single story is too similar. You need to rewrite all of them. Yeah, actually, speaking of that, I something we missed in the last book is that apparently two pages were cut from the book, so that might have been what resulted in what that resulted in. Yeah, I guess. I, I know uh, we actually have like I mean, a letter from that woman in like that's transcribed in Tank Engine Man. That's just kind of her saying like, 
this is fine, but every single story is just Thomas trying and failing to go out and see the world. You need to give it something more. And it's like, no, that's why it's good. Yeah, it's it's trial and error, and each time... Like, you know, Thomas doesn't even try to see the world in Thomas and Gordon. He's, you know, kind of dragged along into it. And then, like, each time he tries again, and he, gets, he a like, little gets closer and closer until he finally succeeds. And that's very, uh... I... It's, it's, the word escapes me right now. It's, uh, it's good. In the first story, he does it unintentionally. In the first, in the second story, he tr he tries and fails before he even, like, starts. In the third story, he makes it most of the way before something goes wrong, and then in the fourth story, he actually does it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can kind of get the criticism of, like, the stories seem kind of similar, because I do think... And, like, it kind of shows in our scores. There is kind of that, like, middle point of the book where, like, Thomas's yeah. Train and, like, Thomas and the Trucks, which, like, are both good stories, are, like, kind of similar. And I feel like there isn't enough there in the book itself to make them really stand out too much from each other. But, like, I feel like that's more of yeah. a need of, like, giving the stories a little more meat than, like scrapping them entirely because like i think it works yeah. really well and the adventure begins if i had to hazard a guess honestly i feel like the two scrap pages may have been from thompson the trucks only because it does feel so lacking yeah but you know overall uh it's you know great book <laughs> it's a very good book i it's amazing that audrey managed to hit it out of the park so soon after publishing his first book thomas is such a good boy he's a good boy like you know we all you like, you know, we all clown on him for, you know... For good reason. Fairly good reason, because of modern years. But, you know, I do feel like he is an endearing character. He's cool. I, He's Thomas the Friend. I the I love, like, kind of later Railway Series, like, kind of grouchy Thomas, but, like, young, excitable, and, like, kind of cheeky and shitty Thomas is such a fun character. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason he's the face of the franchise. <laughs> There's a reason yeah. that he was the one kids loved right out of the gate. Yeah, he, he is the star child, I guess. It really is. You know, he is like, he, you know, like everyone, you know, more or less shares the spotlight equally on the railway. But Thomas is very, you know, he, he's, he's got that, he's got that spark. He's got the je ne sais quoi, you know? It's only really at the end of Audrey's run where Thomas kind of falls and appearances because he's like pretty consistent through most of the books like he shows up at least yeah. a couple times i yeah I feel like, like toward I... after like stephanie I, his appearances kind of taper off until tramland so that's mostly just because of the the shift in focus towards the main line and even more Scarloy railway books it's like uh... the, i think <laughs> the reason thomas barely appears in the governor and peter era is because like not only is every third book taken up by the Scarlowy engine, but there's also, like, the, o the overarching dieselization plot, which is mostly focused on the big engines, and then, like, the Coldy Fell Railway, and, like, you know, the small engines have a few stories, and then it's, like, Edward has, like, mainline engines, so there's just kind of a lot of stuff keeping him from appearing, but, like, he's always yeah. kind of present. Yeah, in tra Tramway Engines in particular, you know, I do wish Audrey had kept writing after Tramway Engines, even if he did, like, you know, kind of feel like he was scraping the bottom of the barrel. But I do feel like uh, it is very good that it ended on Tramway Engines, if only because it gave us, uh, you know, it kind of refocused back on Thomas and his branch line yeah. for that last little bit. And then Chris Audrey stuff happens, but I'm, I'm not thinking about that right now. Um <laughs> Because the Chris Audrey stuff is the Dragon Ball Super of Thomas. It's like, there, there's ideas there that are fun, but you can basically just consider that all of it never happened, and you're not really losing anything. Yeah. And this is coming it's like, to you know, it is, it is technically a, the canon continuation to the timeline, but it also does not innovate and is kind of uh a little bit uh how you say how you say boring 
Um, so speaking of boring, oh god, god. well, how about James the Red Engine? <laughs> so, <laughs> so before before we go, we have a guest. We had a guest on for this book and the next one, yeah, who sadly could not join us for this retrospective. Uh, so a uh, live from the Thomas Vault and totally not just a pre-recorded message. We have Andrew the underscore Chairlord to bring their thoughts on James the Red Engine. Hey, no, no, no! You, you, d you don't, you don't need to use that tape on me. Not this time. Not that you, you, you do not. I, d I don't need to be restrained. Hi there. I'm Andrew Von Chairlord, and my very good friends at the Railway Series Book Club um, asked me to join them in their coverage of James the Red Engine. And I had... I, I, I can't say my expectations were particularly high going into James the Red Engine, but um, however high they were before, they certainly were way too high given the resulting book. Holy shit, it was so boring. <laughs> I I absolutely loved chatting with them and getting to discuss the book, but there was so little to discuss. It it, it felt like a, a, a fucking barren desert. With like barely any nourishment. There was there was next to no like good content for us to like nourish our our, our brains with. <sighs> we were all very, very glad when it was over. Uh, we we played it up a bit on the dramatics, obviously, but we were all very, very glad to have been done with James the Red Engine when we we finished it. It's not great. Overall, not great. At least we got Benry, though. Wow, great job. Thanks, Andrew. Oops. Yes, thank you for your wonderful insight. We'll be back with you in a moment to discuss Tank Engine Thomas again. So, uh, so yeah, James the Red Engine. This is, uh... Very quickly, this is a book. do you mind if I read out the first few bits of my notes for this book? Yeah, go ahead. It's on the news. <laughs> okay, apparently. so, James the Red Engine. Oh god. Oh no. Oh why. <laughs> Yeah. Literally I, nothing happens. James it, barely speaks. I Yeah. Our highest rated story is Troublesome Trucks at uh, sixes across the board. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, forgot uh, about that. Yeah. God. It uh, this sure was a book. I, I have two notes for this book. One, it sucks. And then, also just that, like, like, it's kind of a recurring thing I noticed, at least in these earlier books, is that, like, arcs that people kind of hold up as big kind of aren't as good in practice. Like, obviously no offense to anyone that enjoys it, but, like, I, I feel like a lot of these stories are better in our heads. Because it's like, oh, this is where James develops and stuff. And then it's like, oh, he doesn't really. And it's like, oh, Henry gets his big arc later. That. And then it's like, yeah. oh, no, he he really doesn't. Yeah. I So the only other things I have in my notes are Dolby, because Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, yeah, this is not a, not a great first impression for Dolby, I think. But, you know. His his art is his art's okay, you know. Oh, we fucking forgot to talk about pain on the last page. Pain was amazing. Pain was moving pain on. Pain was so good. The, pain was so good. And what was the second thing you said? The only the the only good part of these recording sessions was the chaotic energy that Andrew brought to the recordings. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. We had nothing to say. We were just dying and gasping for air the entire time. Andrew saved these episodes because. Like, we all kind of were drained by the end of Henry's book. I feel like yeah. if we did James without them, like, we would have all just kind of lost our minds and not in the fun way we actually did. Also, so, my, yeah. my final note on this book, this was the origin point for Benry. Yes, it's the origin point for Benry. Yeah. And we will have more 
like we we will have more to say about Benry when we reach the end of the podcast because we have important we have discovered notes in the Audrey study kindly provided to us by Lunch Ryan <laughs> about Benry and why he isn't in any of the later books. So stay tuned because we have important Benry lore to share. I we this is the thing Luke wouldn't let um w- Luke wouldn't let Tim Dunn read these notes at the lecture because his feeble mind just couldn't handle it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's real unfortunate. And they were they were already cutting stuff, you know, just so they could focus mostly on the Scarlowy Railway stuff. Like they couldn't get into all of the lore about Benry. It just wasn't feasible. Uh <laughs> But yeah, uh, yeah, it's, uh, James the Red Engine. It's a very uninspired book that made us go insane. It, you can really tell that Audrey just did not have a good time writing this. Yeah. Anyway, moving on to something good. Tank Engine Thomas again. The second best book in the original batch. Yeah. I mean, I'd argue it's the best, but, you know, I, I respect your onion. Yeah, I... Uh, I, I definitely think it's one of the best ones. I just think it wasn't for me. This thing sent me into an existential crisis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember you saying and Thomas Goes Fishing. Like, I really I really enjoy all these simple stories, and I really enjoy... Like, the... The Farquhar branch is a very... It's a very fun setting, and it's very, you know... It has a little bit the of everything. The Farquhar branch. Yeah. It has a little bit of everything. It has so many fun things going for it. But it's also very, like, quaint and nice. Yeah. I think my favorite way I've heard it described on... Is probably in the foreword for uh, Branch Line Engines, where Audrey says, There's never a dull moment on Thomas' branch line. Yeah. And I think that's true. Like, it's a quaint little line that's, like, pretty quiet on the surface... But it is chock full of fun happenings, and it's I it, I love it. Farquhar Branch, goaded. It's a quiet line full of loud personalities. Yeah. I'm also just really sad. I'm really. I really like the Farquhar bit. Why isn't it? Okay, so the the fucking DVD's out now, so I can talk about this and talk about why I'm mad about this. But apparently, Farquhar, you know might not be real maybe i don't know maybe the guy who said it in the fucking audio thing was wrong no no th- but trust me this is the thing i i've ha- i've watched the dvd the guy who said it was wilbert god damn it so why why does willie rushton say farker and why is it pr- said pronounced farker on the website mm-hmm. like that's the audrey website why is it on there if it's not real <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Historical revisionism. My favorite station is God. Fafakwa. My favorite station. I looked stations. up the Japanese version of that scene so I could check the pronunciation in katakana. I am pretty sure it is Farker in Japanese too. So it's more like Faka, which is like maybe a verb like lengthening or shortening away from fucker. Which is Exactly. Great. Misty, what's your opinion on the Farquhar Farker debate? She didn't even wake up. Oh. <laughs> is she a sleepy baby? Our discourse is meaningless to her. <laughs> also, this book was also when we had Andrew on for. Yes. It was a make up for subjecting them to James the Red Engine. So let's have another segment live from the Thomas Vault. Definitely not just a recording of Andrew the underscore chairlord's thoughts on Tank Engine Thomas again. Oh, we're, we're going... We're going back to me now? Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Uh, hi again. I once again am Andrew Von Cherlord, and I joined my friends once again for the following book in the Railway Series, Tank Engine Thomas again. And it was... It's such a good book. It really, really is such a good book. It's so... It's so pleasant to read. There's... There's so many, like, iconic and classic stories in, in this book. Um... It's, it's just an absolute delight to read every time, and it really is just... It's just it's just banger after banger. There is no... There is no miss in that book. There's a couple things that come a bit close to missing, but just about manage it. But all the same, you know... 
I I thoroughly enjoyed this book. It was such it was such a good breath of fresh air compared to James the Red Engine, um, which I I'd, I'd say is probably the lowest uh, point as far as books go thus far. Um, if mainly because I like everything else better than it. <laughs> but yeah, Tank Engine Thomas again was great, and I couldn't have asked for a better way to revisit it. Okay, 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 you, you, you don't need to throw me back in so fucking quickly! Okay, da, da. Thank you, Andrew, for your wonderful thoughts on Tank Engine Thomas again. Do we have anything else to say about this? Um, Thomas and Birdie and Thomas and Terrence are two of my favorite stories. The first two are good, just not for me. I, I, in general, I tend to like, like, the kind of like just like branch line like slice of life stories like i really like them in the cgi series when they do them like, oh yeah those are those are really good i love like, unscheduled uh, fucking thomas i rewatched uh thomas and the emergency cable recently to try and like parse out the scaling of thomas compared to annie and claire bone end scale uh spoilers the end scale scaling in bachman is a little wrong Thomas is just a teensy bit too tiny, and Annie and Clarabelle are a teensy bit too big. So when you combine them, it's just a fucking gulf <laughs> of a gap between the top of their roofs. And it's a little distracting, but I'll live with it, because I'm collecting Ending Age now, and I really, like... You can't not have Thomas, and you can't not have Annie and Clarabelle with Thomas. So I'm gonna suffer through it regardless. Um, anyway. Uh, Thomas the Emergency Cable. Pretty good episode. Hey, uh... Thomas the Babysitter is, like, one of my favorite episodes in the series. Oh, that one's really Cute. good. I remember people were, like, dissing on it when it first aired, because, oh, I had a baby crying the whole episode. What a bad episode. But, fucking, did you watch that shit? That was a good episode. It was literally just Thomas wanting to help Season 19 mom. is why we got karma a couple years later. Yeah. I, I genuinely think Season 19 is really good. There's, like, oh, one Oh, yeah, no, I love Season episode. 19. Season 19 is really good. People people got, like, really pissed at it towards the very end of the season just because there was, like, one or two episodes and not the stuff. Like, fucking Rocky Rescue and Other Side of the Mountain came out and everyone was like, this season fucking sucks. Worst season ever. It fell you know, just totally... Yeah, I like, like Other Side of the Mountain. You know, Other Side of the Mountain is... The crash is a bit ridiculous, but I think it's fine. What, you know, as all, it's an okay episode. It's like also you know, it didn't deserve the hate. Also, most people really like. Obviously, not everyone, but like a lot of the same people that were complaining about that also love Gordon takes a tumble. So, yeah, no. Well, it's been long enough for us to be nostalgic about it. Exactly. So that's why we think it's okay now. Uh, it it's like. Like, one of my favorite episodes of the CGI series is Unscheduled Stops, just because I think Thomas just kind of living his life on the branch line is something we don't really see enough of. Yeah, yeah it's a very good story. Plus, I just like the ending. It's like, oh, it's bulgy. Hi, bulgy. <laughs> I don't know, the ending always struck me as kind of weird, because bulgy makes a lot of, like, uh, makes a lot of incendiary comments that reflect... If, uh, an, an iffy ideology and the fact that Torley, like lets him work with the engines anyway. Oh god, I, I, I forgot I... that! Oh! Like, mm, I don't know about that one, Chief. But, you know, it gave us Free the Roads later, and that was an alright episode. They... The Brenner era, you can tell they were definitely trying to stave off a lot of the a reputation the series has gotten deserved or not we're not gonna get into that uh for certain things they didn't always succeed at it <laughs> yeah i feel like to an extent they were trying to have their cake and eat it too yeah like, they were trying to improve on elements from the original like stuff like annie and clarabelle like you know they they don't participate in a lot of these branch line stories despite like literally being like, with Thomas at all times on the branch line. Yeah. And they get to do things in these episodes, and they're far more... They're far more characterized in the Brenner era than they ever were in the Railway series. Uh, but then, you know, at the same time, they were also trying very desperately to cling to, look at us! We are RWS accurate TM. To mixed results. Yeah. Let's say. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I enjoyed the book more than so, yeah. I enjoyed watching Love Life Sunshine at the time. Which is what yeah. I was getting up to. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're in this. well, you know, Love Life Sunshine is very, uh, it, it has its ups and downs. Yeah. Much like, like this the book did for me. Series. Chica Rico OTP, do not at me. <laughs> I... uh, do we want to move on to Troublesome Engines now? Yeah, sure. I was gonna say that with Love Live Sunshine, I appreciate it more now just because the fucking mobile game like stories have made me like the fucking Sunshine characters more just because they're fucking like the, the stories of them just getting up to stupid shit is fun and I like it. Yeah, <laughs> they're funny. I guess it's a yeah. final. Love them. It's a bitches. final fucking thing on Tank Engine Thomas again. I just have in my notes, Bertie, it him. I love Bertie. <laughs> yeah, Bertie and Terrence are very good. Yeah. I enjoy them. He's a funny bus man. Yeah. Hey. Troublesome Engines. It's a book. Uh, I feel like Troublesome, for me, Troublesome Engines and Henry the Great Engine were very interesting. I wasn't expecting to be as into Troublesome Engines as we ended up being. And I wasn't expecting us to be so, like, very harsh towards Henry the Green Engine. So these these two have kind of, like, I guess swapped yeah. places on my tier list just because of how those arcs kind of turned out. But yeah, Troublesome Engines was a lot better than I expected it would be. Same. Like, you know, I was expecting we were going to have, it was going to be a, a lot of, like, you know, headache trying to figure out the whole, uh, is, the, is this strike thing iffy? Is, is, Aud is Audrey a fucking scab? Is, uh... But then the more we got into it, the more we kind of understood what was going on. Yeah. And, you know, the stories in it are also just pretty good, you know? Edward is, Edward was innocent, y'all are just mean. I I think I think <laughs> Troublesome Engines also gave us a bit of interesting development for Gordon in particular, seeing as he's yeah. very clearly the one that's leading everything, and he's always the one to talk for the group. Yeah. yeah. And... It even has at the end of the book where, like, we get to see him not being a dick, essentially, which kind of becomes is, the is major the first thing. first time we see him not be a dick in the entire series? Yeah, it's the first time he isn't just a complete asshole yeah. to everybody. It's the time he goes out of his way to rescue Percy. And honestly, you know, I don't know if I was, like, completely clear about this when we did this episode... But I do think that it uh, it does make sense for Percy Runs Away to be the final story, because you know the the story essentially starts with Gordon and the big engines being butthurt about having to shunt all the time. Yeah, and you're like you know that's that's why they protest and that and even when they get the help they wanted in the form of Percy, they still don't like him. But when Gordon finally comes to terms with Percy and is nice to him, that reflects the true change. So it makes sense. That that is the final story. Yeah. Because now, you know, even if Percy is a bit of a cheeky dipshit sometimes, like, you know, they've at least come to an understanding. And so it makes more sense to end here than on Trouble in the Shed. And honestly, they shouldn't have ended on Trouble in the Shed anyway, because if they did, that'd be like the fucking, like, that the, that'd be like sad story of Henry if it was anti-union or whatever. <laughs> I don't fucking know. That's how they'd spin it. Uh, God. <laughs> I agree. It, it works a lot better than I thought it did, and the like the the strike stuff is a lot less muddy than I thought it would be because like the whole event kind of starts and ends within like the first couple pages, and then after that, it's more just like like Edward is brought in to help out. He has no clue what's going on. They're just being dicks still, and like. Then is when, like, the other stuff starts happening, and, like, Edward, it, it... Edward is not a scab. He just wants yeah. to help. <laughs> yeah, no! So Top of Matt doesn't tell him what's going on. He's just like, yeah, I need you to shut, and he's like, okay, and then they're just being dicks to him. Like, he wasn't, the... he wasn't... Like... I feel like part of Edward being a... Part of the whole thing, part of why I don't think Edward is a scab is also because, like, as soon as he shows up, the big engines do work. Yeah. Like, you know, when scabs <laughs> show up to work at, like, actual during actual strikes, you know, 
that doesn't mean that the other workers are magically coming back with the scabs. It just means the scabs are doing the work of the big engines. So, it's like, I, I think you know, the fact that Edward coming back is what gets them working again is, like, that's a pretty big part of the story, because, like, keep in mind, like, the fact that Edward doesn't shut them up until they start bullying Edward. Yeah, it's after they yeah. bully Edward and, sh like, Henry tries to bully Percy as soon as he shows up, too. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, they're... They're being unreasonable assholes, so that's yeah. why they get punished. It's, you know, it's not an unreasonable demand for them to want Shunter, but it is unreasonable for them to immediately start bullying the help. Yeah. Know? Which, like, I, th I think that's where, like, the, the, like, punishment and, like, they needed to be, like, taught a lesson kind of thing comes in. Which, like, I... It is kind of what led to me to think that it's, like, and I know this isn't a good take to often have, but it's, like, I feel like there isn't really anything, like, political commentary behind this story. Like, I think it is just, like, Audrey had the idea of them, like, having this strike and then, like, it leading to the story and not, like, I, I don't think this was meant to be, like, some deep, like, yeah, satire. Yeah, this, this isn't... Yeah, this isn't this isn't satire. This isn't like you know, inspired by the times. This isn't this isn't political commentary on how railway strikes should be handled. It's just you know, Audrey is like, I wonder what would happen if these you know big childish idiots, like you know, they don't know what a f they're trains. They don't know what a strike is. They probably like do something <laughs> stupid, and is that's it what they a did. Food? <laughs> yeah, I, I love. Like, this is, like, just fucking kind of similar to that. I love the fucking scene in Small Railway Engines where they just don't know what the fuck sheep are for. <laughs> yeah. So the silly thing is people wear instead of paint. God. The Small Railway Engines yeah. are dummies. I love them. I I love them. I can't wait till I get to that book. Same. That's, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, this Are, are this you ready to scream at, at a cow, Jamie? Yes. Yes, I'm ready to scream at a cow. This, um, this book was genuinely the biggest surprise for me. Sorry to shift yeah, the conversation, yeah. but like no, I, it's totally no, it's fine. fine. I have I have it in my. I think in my this notes one paired with like... the next one was a big. Su mm, sorry. No, go ahead. I think this one paired with the next one was a big surprise for me because, like mm. you know, it's like we said at the, at the front of this. You know, I was expecting to be more down on this than we were in actuality. I was expecting us to be a lot like nicer towards Henry. Than we actually were, but the two kind of swapped positions in terms of favorability. Yeah, so it was a, it was a pleasant surprise for this book, at least. I actually, uh, I actually have it in my notes that I'd probably say this is my third favorite book of the first batch. Yeah, well, we'll get to tier lists in a bit, yeah. but I feel like we might want to move on to Henry. Yeah, like it's probably not a lot of meaning. There's, there's not a lot of reason to dwell on Henry since I, we literally just did this book. I was like, I guess it's like before we move on, Percy. Hey. Oh yeah, Percy. Percy's very good. He's not very well fleshed out here, I think, but the groundwork is laid for future stories to yeah. make him very fun. I, yeah. I feel like I feel like Percy is kind of like he's more of a background element until his book, which is where Wilbert kind of figures out what he wants to do with Percy. Yeah. Yeah. That's still And I think that book is very good. Oh, I though. love Percy's yeah. small engine. And I Yeah. I like him here, honestly. Yeah, he doesn't he's, get he's much not bad. He's just kind of not yeah. major. Yeah, no, it's yeah. like he doesn't get much to do, and Percy in the Trousers is literally filler. But, like, I I do like the little bits he gets in Trouble in the Shed, like, runs away, obviously, and, like, even his role at the beginning of um, Gordon's Whistle, where, like, he's kind of, yeah. like, the one, like, on Henry's side. Yeah. Which is, like, an, an, a little good. bit of development for him, because... Keep in mind, the only other interaction he had with Henry at the time is Henry trying to harass him. Yeah. yeah. So Percy's, Percy's and forgiving. speaking of Henry in development... <laughs> or lack thereof. Yeah. Henry the Green Engine. Uh, there's no use dwelling on it, because we literally just covered this book. Uh, this book is, uh, like I said back then, lesser than the sum of its parts. It's... I mean, I wouldn't call it bad. I just feel like it's... It's disappointing to an extent. 
in hindsight. What did we end up giving it? I don't even remember. Uh, I mean, you two gave it really low numbers. I gave it like a six, because I was nice. But you gave it a three, and uh, I think V gave it a, a two. So Yeah, I stand by that. I... I I I I personally disagree, but I I do I I understand that book kind of drained our souls and I, a little bit. I respect yours too. Like I, I just want to make sure you know that. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I, we everybody's yeah. opinions are respected. Hey. Yeah. We can have differences in opinion, and it's okay. I have it in my notes. Henry's crew is the only spark of joy in this sea of pain. <laughs> I gen genuinely, I wouldn't be surprised if Henry's crew has more lines than Henry himself in this entire book. Is it the thing yeah. that sucks? But I also really like the characterization of Henry's crew. Yeah, That's they're fair. Fun. You know, Hen Henry's fireman does a lot to like help out Henry by pointing out, "Hey, if you give him the special coal." He'll, you know, he'll be a better engine. And then also the driver comes up with the, the, with the clever plan, I think. Yeah. Is the driver the one who comes up with it? Yeah, the driver's the one who comes up with the, the sneeze. But, yeah, like... They're very... Henry's crew is very weirdly well fleshed out in this book. <laughs> and then and then there was More the racial slur. himself. Yeah. Yeah. God. You know. I like Gordon's whistle. I wish it was more expanded. I, that's my take. I, I, I also, I was going to say this on Troubles and Engines, but I think it might be better said now, is that both of these books, unlike James the Red Engine, had a very clear vision for what they wanted to be. Yeah. And what kind of story they wanted to tell. It's just that this book did not really execute it that well. So having a creative vision and actually following through on it are two separate things. Yeah. That's the takeaway from this book, I think. Uh, like, you know, you could easily, like, you know, retool this book a little bit to make it better. Like, all the parts are there. You just need to restructure them into a better skeleton. Road to Hell it's is just, paid you know, with good intentions kind this of is, thing. This is the kind of thing... <laughs> the fucking skeletons. It's like early British um, dinosaur fossils. But they just put them together in random bullshit ways that didn't really make sense or come together as a proper whole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit of this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I guess, like... I was very harsh on the, this book towards the end, and I feel like, like having been like kind of separated from it for a week or two, I feel like if you ignore the racial slur, it's okay. It yeah, it's nothing better than that. But like, and I don't, I don't regret giving it as low of a score as I, as I did, but like. I would rather read this than James the Red Engine. Yeah. It's it's the kind of thing for me where it's like, honestly, I just... I mean, obviously, like, rather not read both of them is kind of a given, but it's like, I... This has better ideas, but, like, honestly, that makes it almost worse for me. Because it's like, it's one thing for a product with no clear vision to come out mediocre but like when like there are a lot of good ideas and then it bad like it i don't know it just kind of makes it sting worse yeah that makes sense i think all right so that's uh that's, uh, that's all six books that we've covered. So, uh, before we get into tier listing, I think we should, uh, we should come up with our own individual tier lists out of all the books we've covered so far. Okay. Uh, more or less. So, I think my ranking so far for, uh, the first six Railway Series books is, number one, Tank Engine Tom's Again. Number two, Tom's the Tank Engine. Number three is Troublesome Engines. Number four is Henry the Green Engine. Number five is Three Railway Engines. And number four is James the Red Engine. And I'd like to hear y'all's uh, things, too, before we try and squeeze these into a proper tier list. Okay. Based on all of our consensus. Okay, so, Jamie, this is the thing. 
Mine yeah. is Thomas the Tank Engine, Tank Engine Thomas again, Troublesome Engines, Henry, Free Railway Engines, and James. Okay, so it's the same except you, you put... Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Mine's, uh... Thomas, Troublesome Engines, Tank Engine Thomas again, which... I... Are we ranking these in terms of personal enjoyment or like what we think quality wise? Because it's like I feel like Thomas. I mean, just just in general, like how how would you rank these just based on the everything? I guess. So however you choose. I guess like I, for me, troublesome mentions over Tank Engine Thomas again, but it's like I feel like that's the better book of the two, like Tank Engine, but like. I didn't personally you enjoy Troublesome Engines more. Yeah, I didn't personally like the first couple in uh, Tank Engine, but like that's mm. like per- just personal thing. I completely get the appeal, and they are good stories, just not for me. And then after <laughs> that, uh, I-, I guess Three Railway, and then Henry, which like you could kind of interchange them. I th- I think Henry frustrated me more overall, but yeah. And, and then James at the bottom, because, yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's a reason James never right, yeah. the focus book, and then the one he did was racist. <laughs> it's not... I wouldn't call it racist so much as poorly realized. Yeah, no, uh, it's it's not racist, it just does The only racist book in the Railway series is Henry the Green Engine, because it has a racial slur. It doesn't help the series at all. Yeah, it could have helped the series by, like, fleshing out a certain element yeah. of it, i.e. James's inherent biases, but, uh, it, you know, it kind of did, but only, like, on paper. I feel can like just, this- Can we just uh, not cover James and the Diesel Engines? Oh no, I, I want to go honestly, off. I mean, we could. Honestly, I've been wondering if we even want to go beyond number 26, just because, like, I feel like after that point it might just not be fun- Anymore. Yeah, but it, it like... I think that's a I think that's a discussion we should have after when we're at the end of the uh, yeah. Wilbert books. <laughs> right in the comments, do you want us to suffer or are you kind? <laughs> I, I guess I'm actually probably gonna cut this out because I don't want them to like. I, I I don't want that peek behind the curtain. Yeah. So now that we have our personal uh, tier lists figured out. I'm going to introduce you all to the Railway Series Retrospective Scoreboard, which is going to be our actual tier list kind of thing. So what we're going to do is we are going to collectively and democratically rank every Railway Series book on this, like, scoreboard thing. And uh, we're going to update it every time we do one of these retrospectives. And uh, today we're just going to rank these six, and then next time we're going to rank the next six, and so on. So, uh, yeah, let's let's get to ranking. Obviously, given we all put James at the very bottom, yeah, I feel like James should be the bottom currently. Yeah. I feel like he's gonna be the bottom for most of Wilbert's run. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate. I don't really see something going under it for now. Uh, for now. I think, uh... Like, honestly, I don't think out of Wilbert's books there's anything that go under it. Yeah, like, there's know. nothing I can think of. If we of. go into Chris's stuff, maybe, but, you know. Do we want to put Henry the Green Engine over three railway engines? God, I... Being honest, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I feel like three... I mean, I feel like Henry the Green Engine is a much more, like... <sighs> like, it's so much better on paper, but it is, like, in execution, I don't feel like it's very good. I just don't know if I could just face saying that, yes, it is lesser than Three Railway Engines. I guess for me, Three Railway Engines is kind of a higher highs, lower lows situation, because there's nothing that was annoyed me as much as um the tunnel yeah tunnel for in yeah. henry's book but well, i guess there is the racial slur but do we really count that yeah not counting that uh, whole thing 
I, uh, I guess, yeah, that's that's like a. I guess the question that's, is that's like, a mitigating factor, or however the fuck you say it, uh, whatever the word is. Yeah, that's like a. We're, that is an outlier, and for the sake of like you know being fair, uh, yeah. I guess we're not going to be counting it for this. So I guess the question here is like, what you prefer between something that's consistently mediocre versus something that like swings for the fences and misses. For me, um. Honestly, I feel like I do kind of... Uh, I feel like I do kind of consistently prefer the stories in Henry the Green Engine, I guess. Like, you know, because Edward's Day Out is kind of like... It's nice, but it's kind of just... Eh. Yeah. And then... But, like, Henry the Green Engine, like, I do... Even if the arc is poorly realized, I do really like Henry, like, you know going through what he goes through and coming out stronger. I do really like Gordon's whistle. And, you know, Percy and the Scarf, okay, that one kind of sucks, but, like, you know, they, they, you know, <laughs> the TV series proved you could turn it into something worthwhile. And Henry Sneeze, like, even if it did have that, you know, even if it did have a racial slur in it, it was an okay story. So, I mean... I think, personally... I feel like I could justify putting Henry above three railway engines. I think, personally, I prefer three railway engines, but, like, if both of you prefer Henry, then I'm fine to put Henry above. I... Honestly, yeah. I... Same here. If you two if you two want to put three railway engines above Henry, I'm fine with that. You know, this is democratic. Yeah. There's three of us, so that way we don't end up with split choices. I'm, I'm probably uh, not the best deciding vote, because I... Honestly, I could go either way. I, I prefer three railway engines, because I think the highs of, like, Edward and Gordon, and to a lesser degree, Edward, Gordon, and Henry, are better than anything in... Uh, Henry, for me... But, like, it, it's kind of a I could go either way thing. They both have different issues, if that makes sense. Flip me true. Yeah. Flip, so... flip me true, Mari. If it's, if it's the top of her, then Henry. If it's the bottom, then for railway engines. She landed sideways. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the face is facing the computer screen, so... What was that one? Henry. Okay, so Henry goes higher. <laughs> okay. What a, what a very good... You know, since we're going to be updating this, we don't have to, like, you know... Yeah, it... I, we could, like, you know, adjust orders depending on how we feel in later recaps. You know, we don't have to... We don't have to marry this tier list the way it is. You know. We can rectify this if need be. Yeah. Uh, so... I feel like Troublesome Engines as third is makes sense. Yeah. And then since you know cause that that feels the most consistent with the way we've placed it because yeah, V and I both placed it as third and you placed it as second. Yeah. And to be fair, I think we should have Tank Engine Thomas again as second and Thomas the Tank Engine as third. I'm willing to make the sacrifice, even though Tank Engine Thomas, again, is my favorite. And that's completely valid. Honestly, yeah. the, there is always the matter of personal preference with these sort of things. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the, when, it, when it comes down to it, these rankings, they're not objective. Yeah, they're they're not objective. They're just for fun. Like, this, this, tier, this scoreboard thing here is going to be the closest we ever have to any kind of, like, official empirical approved ranking but that's just because we're going to be like you know going back and updating it every time like you know and even then it's just our opinions uh, you know not everything we say is you know nothing we say is law even if we wish it would be and you know the, the, even then i don't wish it would be i have terrible opinions like even then opinions can change <laughs> over time yeah yeah like you know if if we end up deciding somehow that fucking Tank Engine Thomas again is somehow the worst book to ever grace humanity. We'll move it below James. It's whatever. We can update it later because we're going back to this tier list in, you know, X amount of episodes. Honestly, the thing with this tier list is I only see, like, Thomas and, like, Tank Engine Thomas again going up. Like, they'll pro- like, even by the end of this whole thing, I feel like they'll still be, like, at the top, pretty much. Like, I think- 
Yeah. There'll be something, like, probably there, like, dividing or maybe above, but, like, there's... I, I feel like they're still gonna end up in, like, the top five yeah. at least. Like, you know, I feel like the, the very end. top Yeah, is they're very be, good. Like, Tank Engine Thomas again, Thomas the Tank Engine, and then, like, 95% Skullowy books. Well, you know, there's... I think Duck and the Deez Launcher might end up there, because that's a pretty good one. Well, I guess we'll, you'll just you'll just have to check out Railway Series Book Club to find out. Oh! Yeah! Wait! Can I do TV series shit? Uh, I mean, I guess. It wouldn't really be a complete retrospective of TV series shit, because, like... You know, it, yeah, no, it just we, we haven't fully completed season one, but what what are your thoughts? I tell us your thoughts. It surprised me how exact season one is of an adaption, and like that's not necessarily yeah. a bad thing. It's just like it's mostly word for word, and like the only real changes are like the odd reaction shot from the engines or. Like, them kind of cut trimming down aspects where the humans are, like, on screen a lot. Probably because, like, the models were, like, falling apart <laughs> at the time. Yeah. So it's just... Yeah. Was... So, yeah, I... Yeah. You know, I think that is part of why I feel like season... You know, the episodes in season one would probably benefit both the most and the least from a readaptation, depending on what gets done because it's like in thomas in thomas's train you you spend like the first few minutes or so talking about like railway series crystal and if it's literally just you know yeah. a readaptation based solely on the text of the books season one wouldn't really benefit from that because that's already it what is. season one is yeah. it is mostly just text from the books and i feel like an ideal railway series read adaptation would expand these stories by a whole lot. Yeah. Like, you know, just, you know, just in general, across all the stories, just expanding them more to make them, like, you know, have a longer runtime, maybe, like, you know, maybe, like, you know, 10 or even 20-minute stories as opposed to, like, fucking, like, five-minute bedtime stories, which is what the originals are. Yeah. Because, like, I, I feel like that would definitely help with a lot of these, like, early arcs that, like you said earlier, they feel a lot more substantial than they actually are on paper. Yeah. Like, a readaptation that expands the original books instead of just copying them word for word would be really good for that. Yeah. Because then it could be finally realized in its full glory. But at the rate the franchise is decaying, that's probably a pipe dream. <laughs> <laughs> I, I the... feel like with the TV series, the two best things we've seen so far are The Adventure Begins and A Scarf for Percy. Yeah, I was gonna say exactly yeah. that. And before doing this, um, like I always enjoyed the adventure begins. <laughs> I liked it a lot when I first watched it in twenty fifteen, and I watched it once or twice since. But like in my head, I never really thought about it because like it was just kind of stories we'd seen before. But like doing this made me realize how much. Like, I thought from it was in, like, the other stories, if that makes sense. Like, stuff like Thomas yeah. and Edward's relationship. Like, that's not here at all. Tom I don't like, think Thomas yeah. and Edward directly interact again until Thomas and the Twins. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I feel like you really hit on hit the nail on the head earlier when you were saying that these arcs feel a lot more substantial in our heads, Mark. Yeah. Because, like, I feel like that, that does apply for, honestly, kind of all of the Railway series, even when it does get into, like, like over, the overarching kind of dieselization story, when that kind of becomes a thing. Even then, most of the story isn't directly about dieselization. It is all basically just, you know, short slice-of-life bedtime stories, even if they do deal with the main plot and you know at the end of the day that's what these are these are short little bedtime stories for kids and i feel like maybe in some of our analysis we are kind of uh putting a bit too much emphasis on them to be like as fully developed as like a modern episode of tv which you know i feel like is fair to an extent compared to like some of the stuff we've gotten from like the brenner era which do a better job of being that but uh, I feel like, to an extent, we should 
maybe in future books we should kind of like temper our expectations a little when it comes to like criticizing these to an extent like obviously there will be areas where you know we'd want to talk about stuff like that but like you know it i'm kind of rambling i don't know if i have a coherent point to this (laughs) no i get what you're saying yeah (laughs) that's I, i think everything here except like honestly like james and i i guess even henry does work as like they work for what they are in the end yeah and that's probably why season one stayed so close to the source material is just because like for the scope that they were going for it was you know yeah. this is fine you know which i'm i don't know i didn't mean to bring down the mood or anything no you it's didn't don't worry it's mind. honestly one of the things i'm most curious about getting into the next series of books because we're going to be going into series two and as late as season four for a couple of these like i'm very curious to see how the adaptions kind of evolve because i honestly don't remember if season two is like season season one very similar to season one yeah it's very similar to season one but i also feel like season two is Season 2's vibe for me is a little bit weird. And I don't just mean, like, the, you know, everything is falling apart vibe. It's more like Season 2... I've probably said this in a previous episode, because this is one of my favorite things to say. It's that Season 2 feels like it's speedrunning the, like, just ever the rest of the Railway series. Which, you know... Yeah. Wasn't really a great roadmap when it comes to developing the future of the series. Because... You know, you break chronological order that way by just speed running through everything you can do right now, instead of like you know, waiting a little bit and like I don't know. We can talk about it later. I I don't have the the brain power. If you do number storage correctly, you can skip the entirety of the of the missing coach portion of the game, and you can get to the the end significantly faster. God, I think the main takeaway from this set of books. Is that it's early days, and early some days, of sir. the results are a little bit rough. Yeah, exactly. But you know, I think on the whole, this is a fine beginning. Yeah, you know? and it's only like, up from you know, here too. You have two wonderful books in there, you know, and the rest range from kind of like mediocre to yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. So I feel like you know, on the whole, not as good as it could be. The bell curve is extremely fucked up by the Thomas books. <laughs> But, yeah, you know, it's it's not abysmal. It's a fine beginning. So you know. yeah, and once we get once good. we get to Toby, everything will be okay. Everything will be okay. It... I I can't wait. Yeah, no, we're <laughs> d- 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 it's only up from here. Like obviously, there's yeah. that ending, but you know what I mean. So yeah, um, before we before we go, uh, you know, before we before we leave, uh, this before we end the season. Uh, we need to sh- we need to share those notes on Benry we promised. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah, it Benry. Uh, the notes on Benry from the, the Benry, the thin clerk. Yes, the Benry. Uh, Otter was gonna build a model of Benry, of course, named the Benry. But you know, that's actually the one that it. they found at the Tallyland. Well, they also found the sheet of notes here. Let, let me read this to you. Okay, so. <laughs> In 1942, Benry and Edward had their final battle, and Edward used the last of his almighty power to send Benry to the end of time, where he was never seen again. And of course, doing this expended all of Edward's almighty power, which means that, you know, from about the, you know, by the time we next see him in uh, Gordon the Big Engine, he's nowhere near as powerful as he once was in these books which is very sad but i i I suppose it's what old age will do to you and as for benry he was sent to the end of time and you know it was expected he was going to die there because it's the end of time you you shouldn't be able to live past the end of time but then all engines go happened so he kind of got absorbed into that because that takes place at the end of time (laughs) uh because it's the end of the universe uh so he was finally able to take over Henry's life and pose as him. And that's why Henry is recolored Gordon, is because it's actually Benry 
and he took Henry's green color too. See, it oh, all comes full time. cube. The end of time before. It all comes full cube, baby. The end of time before <laughs> all engines go happened was kind of like the world of nothing chapter of Paper Mario, or Super Paper Mario. Like, is that the one where they end up in hell, or no? That's called the underwear. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to trust that that makes sense and is a good analogy. And that's where Benry spends all of his days alongside Smudger because Smudger does not exist. Boom! Tied it all together, baby. Everybody, everybody, go listen to the World of Nothing song from Super Paper Mario. It's fucking creepy. Everyone, go watch Love oh. Live Superstar. It's a really good show. Th- that's that's all I have. Is is that all? Is that all we have? <laughs> Join our mailing list. We, we've been flying without a script, in case you weren't able to tell. But, you know, I think we did a pretty good job. Same. And this is a great way to wrap up the first season of Railway Series Book Club. We're going to be taking a bit of a, uh, a break uh, after this releases for, like, a few months. Don't know how long. Yeah, we're going to... Well, yeah. probably... Obviously, we will come back with Toby. Uh, but, we'll you probably know, come back somewhere we'll, around, uh... like, Christmas. Yeah, like yeah. November, yeah. I think, we're, at the latest. We're in, like, November, December. Sometime around there, probably. I might just cut this out, because I don't want to promise a time frame. Yeah, I Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I know that's what we're planning on doing, is coming back in time for, like, you know, uh, Christmas party on Christmas. But, you know, that, that's... I, I, I don't want to promise that in case it goes wrong. I got you. <laughs> promise is Christmas um, party. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see you at Toby. We'll, uh... Go for the yeah. island that lives a dear old train. So yeah, thank you for listening to the Railway Series Book Club. We very much appreciated your support throughout this nine-month project so far yeah. that we've been going on. Thank you so we much, had, everyone. Like, we we it's amazing. Like we, we only very recently hit 200 subscribers on YouTube, and it's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for listening and giving us your support and engaging with us on the Discord and the comments and on Twitter. Yeah. It, it's it's really fun. I like This has been a great... I, like, I, I can't words, but I'm very happy. <laughs> Jamie, I, Jamie I deserves pretty much this. all the, like, all the credit for, for this being as good as it is. Yeah, she's the one well, that you puts d- everything together, pretty much. I, thank you, but, uh, you know, I, I, I can't be credited alone with this, because Mari, you've been very helpful with the editing workload, and... V, you've been extremely helpful in managing the Twitter side of things. So, like, it's... Yeah. Yeah. It's just... I can't worry. It's just the least that we can know. Yeah, this, this whole show is Jamie's idea. She did pretty much all of the asset creation. Like, she schedules everything. Like, she's very good. You're both yeah. very good. Well, we're all very good. We're all friends. We're we're all uh. We're all in the chat. We're working together. Thompson's friends anthem. for now and friends forever. Working together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll see you. We'll see you soon, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.